What's up guys? I am Uncorrupt and I want to share my tin foil hat theory about why the Hearthstone expansion announcement was delayed and why the core set reveal has also been delayed. I've got my tin foil hat on. We're ready to rock. Taking a look here as we go back looking at Twitter on March 7th. The Play Hearthstone account tweeted out a calendar for upcoming events, and you can see right here, March 15th, we're expecting the expansion reveal, and everybody was also expecting that the core set was going to be revealed on Tuesday, March 15th. But, as you can see here, just one week later, March 14th, the day before the expected announcement, we get a delay. Adventurers Hold Steady will be sharing the details of the new Hearthstone expansion on March 17th, instead of March 15th, as previously announced, Thanks for your understanding. We'll see you then. So you have to realize that these, these expansion announcements don't get moved over something trivial. They had a lot of planning and a lot of resources dedicated to this reveal coming out on the 15th. And then they push it back to the 17th. And this is just like bad for business. You think it hurts the average player. The average player is expecting an announcement. Hey, I'm ready for new cards. I want to find out what's going on. That kills hype for that average player. Then you have the content creators. Content creators were all hyped up. You have people taking days off work. They're taking a half day. They want to be able to see the announcement. They want to be able to cover the announcement, whether you're talking about YouTubers, streamers, podcasters. You had podcasters that had a special episode lined up just to be able to cover this announcement on the 15th. You kill their hype as well. And it really can't be overstated of how bad this is. All these content creators, free marketing. They don't have to pay these people, but these people are out there hyping up their game and driving sales for them. You're killing the hype of those people too. And hey, a lot of these content creators, if your primary source of income is content creation, then you've got a lot riding on these announcements. As an example of this, we're going to take a look at Vicious Syndicate. Vicious Syndicate, of course, is one of the most influential publications within the Hearthstone community, having a big effect on shaping the Hearthstone meta. And here we have founder and head of Vicious Syndicate Data Reaper Report Project, Zach, reacting to this announcement. Heads up, our rotation announcement will come a bit later than usual. And then we go on to find out that April 5th, there's going to be a final dump of cards that have yet to be revealed for the new expansion. With that last reveal, we'll share the name of the next Hearthstone year roadmap and this year's updates to the core set. So the core set has actually been delayed until just before the new Hearthstone year starts. Zach's reaction to this my hype for the expansion died with this message. We'll probably not do any expansion-related content this time around. This is impossible. For those that don't understand, doing the card preview and the theory crafting article is insanely hard work. This basically means I have five days to produce everything while knowing very little before I start any work. Never had this brutal of a window. It's impossible. So you can see here, content creators are just being crushed by the delays of the announcements. This is not a small thing. So what could possibly cause Blizzard to delay the announcement by this much? For the developers, they're always concerned about the health of the game, and especially the long-term health of the game. When you're talking about revealing an entire core set for a new standard year, you're talking about something that's going to affect the next 12 months of the game. So I want to take a look here at some of the data that we can find on the Vicious Syndicate website. Class archetype and distribution at all ranks, we have Druid almost 26%. Diamond 1 to Diamond 4, Druid 32.3%. At Legend, Druid spiking to 35.5%. Top 1K Legend, Druid represents 41% of the meta. Now, of course, nobody has all the data that Blizzard has. Blizzard is continuously collecting data from games played, cards played, card played win percentage, so on and so forth. Everything you can think of, they're tracking it. And as a developer, when you look at this and say, wow, at the top end of our game, you know, 40% is Druid, that's just bad for the health of the game. That's not a sign of a healthy game, and it's probably going to end up driving away players at some point. Again, these aren't the stats that Blizzard has, but it's a ballpark enough figure that you could say, well, what if the actual number is 35%? That's still unacceptable. But what if that actual number is 45, 50, or even 55% of the meta is actually Druids? That's insane. And we've had recent precedent of Blizzard actually making changes because of a class being overrepresented in play rate. We don't have to look any farther back than the most recent Rogue nerfs. You had Poison Rogue and Burgle Rogue being played at a level that was just disproportionate to the other classes in the rest of the game. And so for the health of the game, you have to make balance changes. And by looking at these figures, Druid is actually more of an outlier than Rogue was, not necessarily in terms of power level, but in terms of play rate. 
One of the beliefs in the community is that after the core set rotation, Ramp Druid would no longer see as much play as it does because the deck would just be bad. With so many of Ramp Druid's ramping cards either being part of the core set or due for rotation, people just assumed that it was going to go away. But what if the new core set were going to include cards from the previous core set as well? Or what if some of the cards from the previous standard year were going to be part of the new standard Hearthstone core set? That would mean that if cards like Lightning Bloom and Overgrowth that people were expecting to just be gone and unplayable in Standard were actually still going to be around, then Ramp Druid could be played at a 50% level at the beginning of a new Hearthstone year. My tinfoil hat theory is that some of these cards were actually included in the core set. And as the developers began to get more information about play rates and realized that something was going to have to be done about Druid, they actually pulled the core set and had to take a look at the Druid specific cards and they were going to have to rework it. Now this would be a massive undertaking because it's not as simple as just removing those couple of cards and replacing them. Any changes that would be made to the core set for the Druid class would affect Druid for the entire year of Standard. We've heard before that they have cards planned out up to two years ahead of time which means certainly they have the next standard year fully planned out. And if you start tinkering with the core set of any given class, it's going to affect the entire year of that class. And so my tinfoil hat theory is that they are re-examining the core set and the first, second, and third expansion of the new Hearthstone standard year because they're going to have to go back and make some changes. Otherwise, Druid's going to be out of control or they're going to be making balance changes to old cards within the first week to two weeks of the new Hearthstone standard year, which again is just going to be an outright bummer. I don't know that it's true, but that's my tinfoil hat theory. I'm Uncorrupt. For more Hearthstone related content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Also, if you enjoyed the video, please drop a like. Thank you. Good luck out on the ladder.